Using your cameo is so important in Mortal Kombat 1, so today I'll be breaking down the entire cameo roster so you can decide which one fits best for you. Okay, so the first cameo we're going to look at today is Striker, and I think Striker is one of the most underrated cameos at the moment, to be honest. I'm going to quickly go over Striker cameo just to show you what Muji has. So he has the low, he has the overhead. These are both pretty much unreactable. You can't really tell the difference because he does the low a little bit delayed. It's really hard to tell if he's doing the low or the overhead. Striker cameo allows you for some really easy mix up. So for example, this Radiant String is double low, so you have to block low for both hits. But if you have Striker, you can literally just cancel it into an overhead that's basically unreactable. So you pretty much get a free mix up with Striker. If it does manage to hit, you don't really get that much damage for it, but the overhead is actually plus on block, so you still get to keep your turn as well. If we look at his handcuff recent, you can see they're stuck in it for so long that you can actually walk up and just get a free 50-50. The reason this is so good is you can actually end all of your combos in this too. Like, watch this. So I can do stand one striker, re-stand, and then if I wanted to, I can go to the overhead or the low. And I still have Striker for the extra mix-up layer as well. So just with those moves alone, I think he's a really good cameo. The last move Striker has is this little grenade toss. It's actually pretty strong, to be honest. You can do close and you can do far. It's a great move for extending combos. And you can actually combo from grabs with this one. Check this out. Wow, that is so cheap. 23% from a grab, by the way. I think that pretty much sums up everything for Striker. So let's move on to the next cameo. Up next, we have the Scorpion cameo. This is actually my personal favorite at the moment. I've been using this a lot with Shang Tsung as well. If your character doesn't have a great meterless combo starter, this is a great way to get your combos going. You can see right here, again, meterless. You can kind of do this from any button. It won't always combo, but it also is an overhead. So sometimes you can just catch your opponent slipping up on block. The main reason Spear is so good is it actually has armor. So you can see here, I did Spear on block. And then I got a punish because he tried to armor attack, but the Scorpion cameo absorbed it. You can also use Spear to escape any string that has a gap in it or any pressure that's not exactly real. There we go. <laughs> I think that's enough about Scorpion. You can see the potential. Let's move on to the next one. Now we're going to talk about the Sub-Zero cameo. This is being considered one of the best cameos in the game right now. I don't know if I agree just yet, but it does seem very strong so far. So let me break it down for you. The first and most simple move is just his freeze. So, I mean, it's not really anything too complicated about this one. It freezes them. You get a full combo. It's actually quite fast. So you can use it pretty late in combos and get some random stuff like this, for example. This isn't optimal stuff, I'm just showing you examples, but you can see the idea. The next move is his shoulder charge, it's actually quite good, it does give you an advantage on block as well. If you can sneak this into block string safely against your opponent, you can use it to kind of steal your turn and keep your pressure going. Even in neutral, it actually goes very far, so it's not a bad move just to kind of throw it out in neutral. The last cameo move for Sub-Zero is the Ice Armor. This gives you complete projectile invincibility. It's actually really good, to be honest. Once this armor is on you, projectiles literally just don't work. So, for example, if Reptile does Force Ball, you can see I'm just absorbing it. No armor, no damage, nothing like that. So, overall, Sub-Zero cameo is really good against Zoners, but it's honestly good against everyone with almost every character. So, right now, definitely one of the strongest in the game. Next up, we have the Serena cameo, which is probably one of the more popular ones right now. So, the first move that I'll show you is her Meter Drain. So you see she comes out right here. If they're standing in it, you can see that meter going down super fast. Because this is an ambush cameo, there's no risk going for this one. So you can kind of just throw it out and hope that they stay in it. So the main reason most people are using this cameo right now is just because of the damage. So you can see right here, you can actually loop the cameo move back to back. Like very quickly. Look at the damage as well. I'm already at like 40% pretty much. It's going to be over 40% for one bar with cameo. She does have this one hit projectile right here, but I don't really see many people using this. I guess it's like a fast little check. I don't really recommend using it too often. Just save the cameo for the damage. Final move for Serena is this little backflip right here. It's actually a pretty good reversal. So for example, if I'm blocking and I'm mashing this move, she'll actually come out as a reversal for me. That pretty much wraps it up for Serena. Probably the easiest cameo in the game for such a high reward. If you're struggling to learn how to use cameos right now, definitely try Serena because she's super easy. Up next in the video, we have the Kano cameo. This is probably one of the more understood cameos because we did have Kano in the beta and in the stress test. So for example, if I was playing someone like Johnny Cage, I could do something like that with Shadow Kick in the Kano Ball. Kano Ball can also set up some pretty sick block strings that you normally wouldn't be able to do like that, for example. He also does have the laser, which I honestly don't really recommend using that much. Not many people that play Kano will even use this move these days. Alongside the Kano Ball, he does have the knives as well, which will combo if someone gets hit by it. So you can actually do some pretty crazy combos with Johnny that a lot of you have probably seen at this point. Here's a quick example of why knives are so good in some combos. Like, for example, with Johnny Cage, you can do knives after nut punch and still get a follow-up jump in like this and get a full combo, 33%. There's probably hundreds of other combos where knives are really good as well, so definitely lab them with your character if you're interested in Kano. We're going to get into the Sonya cameo now. I feel like not many people are really using this one at the moment. It was obviously used heavily in the stress test and the beta because it was probably one of the easier cameos to use, and it's honestly going to give you a lot of damage as well. 
The first move we'll look into is her energy ring. She can come out and do a quick projectile like this. If you decide to hold it, you can charge it and let it go at any time you want. And it actually becomes quite a strong projectile. On top of being able to charge it, she can actually cancel it. So this gives you some pretty interesting interactions on block. A really basic example of canceling on a block would be something like this. Obviously, that's not very strong or very real, but it's just an example. She also has a really good combo extender with the square wave, which is very strong. It's also a really good combo extension because you can do it twice in combo. So you can get really high meterless damage that you normally wouldn't get with other characters. So that was just 40%. I spent bar at the end just for the hype. Speaking of combo extenders, she also has the leg grab, which is also a side switch. I think this is really good because if you can get a hit while you're in the corner, you can put yourself out of the corner and still get a really high damage combo. Cyrax cameo is actually a pretty interesting one. So we're going to break it down for you right now. First move you can see on screen is the classic net. I'm a little disappointed with how slow net is in this game because you can't actually do any buttons to combo into it. So for example, if like I try and do like a button into net, I don't think there's any character that actually has a button that combos into the net after that. It's kind of decent to just throw it out there every now and then, I guess. But it's still like, you don't really get a chance to really use this without getting super lucky. I guess when it does hit, you get some pretty good damage, but still. I wish it was a little bit faster. It wouldn't be Cyrax without something exploding, so he does have the self-destruct right here. It doesn't have the craziest hitbox or anything, but I'm sure there's some pretty crazy setups that you can get to like make them go right into it. So I think that's one that probably needs to be labbed a little bit more, but it's decent, it's decent. The main cameo move you'll be seeing people use in sector is this right here. You can do some really crazy combo extensions and some really unique conversions as well. For example, Lee Mei's instant overhead normally only does 13% and it knocks them down. If you time this correctly with Cyrax, you can actually get a full combo. 35% from the instant overhead this time. Overall, I think Cyrax cameo is pretty strong. I feel like over time it'll get even better. I haven't used it too much myself personally, but it's definitely on my radar. We just did Cyrax, so I feel like it's only right to go to Sector next. Sector's missile is probably his best cameo move. I'm not 100% sure on that, but at the moment I feel like it is the best one. Considering you don't have to take any risks to make it come out and your opponent somewhat has to respect it quite a lot. It's decent in neutral, but it's actually really strong after combo. So if I do this smoke combo right here, get the knockdown, call Sector, he comes in, then I get a mix up. So like you can see how cheap that one can be. The missile is very strong, but so is Flame Burner right here. It's minus three, so you can do block strings in the Flame Burner if you want and kind of have like a safe mix up, for example. You could use this in your stagger string, so you could be staggering doing all these random staggers, and then you could throw in a flame burner just to mix it up a little bit to keep your turn a little bit longer. Similar to other cameos, Sector's teleport actually gives you a full combo launcher. I don't know how good it is for a character like Smoke, but just to show you an example, that was 23% meterless. Sector is a pretty simple cameo, but definitely worth giving a try. Probably one of the most enjoyable cameos in the game right now. Next up, we're going to talk about the Frost cameo. This was used in the stress test as well, so a lot of you guys have seen a bit of this already. So the first move we'll look into is her freeze. So she does have a freeze just like Sub-Zero. You get a full combo from this as well. Yeah, big damage. That was almost like 40% from a one bar combo because of Frost. You can also use this one mid combo, but it is a bit slower. So I wouldn't recommend using it too much midway through combos. Sub-Zero's freeze is a tiny bit faster. So I wouldn't suggest doing that too much with Frost. This little Orpy with Frost is actually pretty interesting. I haven't found anything too crazy with it just yet in the full version of the game. You can see once it's out, they sort of have to respect it. It doesn't go away and hit. I've seen people do stuff like grab into it, which is pretty cheap. I think there's a lot of potential with this thing. I personally haven't really used it too much in the full version, but I think it's definitely a good move. She also has this little rising ice move, which is kind of just a move to keep people away from you. If they try and jump, they'll land on it. It's probably her weakest cameo move, but it's not too bad just to throw it out every now and then. I think this is one of her best moves because you can kind of end block strings or sneak it in on block. Especially if you do it from a button with a lot of range, you can see the pushback is actually insane. We're basically full screen now. Since I first saw the Jax cameo, I knew it was going to be one of my favorites. I want to break this one down for you guys and show you some potential that it has. The first move we'll get into is the unblockable ground pound. So he pretty much comes out, does an unblockable. You literally cannot block this, so your opponent has to jump. They can interrupt this in combos, but if you do it at the right time in your own combos, there's no way they can really avoid it. And then you can get like a full combo from an unblockable dive kick pretty much. He also has energy wave, which is a decent move to kind of just put into your block strings. There we go. Okay, that's just a little potential right there. If I really wanted to, I could spend time and probably find like a 45% combo with Jackson Lao, but that's just to give you the ideas. Kind of continuing with Kung Lao, we're going to talk about Kung Lao's cameo move now. The first move is very straightforward. It's pretty much just his spin from all the other games. Nothing too crazy about it. It's a good combo launcher. You can use it early to start your combos or you can use it late. It's really up to you. 
This cameo teleport move is very interesting. I'm going to try and show you the best way possible, but it is a little confusing, so just bear with me on this one. So from what I understand, you can pretty much cancel your animation super early with the teleport, and it can grab you mid-animation. So for example, with Reptile's Acid Speed, you can see I'm stuck in the animation for a while, right? If you time this right with Kung Lao, you can actually get a full combo. Yo, that is sick. 37% meterless. There's probably a lot of moves that you can do stuff like this with, but that was just one example with Reptile. The last move for this cameo is the Buzzsaw, which I actually think is pretty decent. It's a very fast low. I think the best way this move is going to be used is for, like, setups. So, for example, you can do something like this. This is just a really random example. Just making up to kind of show you the setup potential. I'm not going to dive too crazy into it, but I think Buzzsaw is also a decent move. I haven't even played against one Kung Lao player or a Kung Lao cameo yet, so hopefully this video changes that. Up next, we have probably one of the most complicated cameos in the game, Shijinko. You can see when he just comes out here, he literally does nothing. He just sits there and his cameo bar starts loading up. So the first move we'll look at is the punch. He just comes out, does his punch, and then he kind of hangs around and floats like this. So you can see while he was floating, the cameo bar was actually loading. What that does is it gives him two options. So the first option is he can do the half a meter version which is one of the moves like this with reptile you can see now it's still at half so i only have access to this one again but if he comes back out i can charge him up again i can just play the entire game while he's charging i don't have to really think about him too much when chujinko is fully charged and the cameo meter is full you get access to another move which is usually a much better version so like this time i have a launcher instead of the acid spit honestly it's a pretty creative character because i can just play the game like this jinko is building up he's not even on screen right now once he's fully charged up, it can actually get pretty interesting. It can do some really cool combos. Like, for example, this isn't optimal or anything, but like, just to give you an idea, that was a little 30% combo with Shijinko stealing the reptile move. The main challenge with this cameo is going to be trying to stop Shijinko from getting hit so he can actually build it up. He has this pretty creative run move where you can kind of position him wherever you want, and you can also cancel him at any time to be safe. Using that running move alongside the punch, and also he has this kick as well, I feel like you'll be able to charge up a lot of these moves pretty easily, to be honest. I could probably make an entire video on Shijinko cameo, but let's just leave it there for today. Next up, we have one of the more unique cameos in the game, the Mataro cameo, which I think a lot of people haven't really explored yet. He does take a while to unlock, so a lot of you probably haven't had the chance to play him just yet. So the first move we'll look into is his triple projectile. I honestly think this is really cool. I don't know how to use it just yet. I haven't labbed it too much with Shang Tsung or anything like that. I have seen some pretty crazy combos out there where you can do stuff like this and then like kind of keep it going. You get the idea. You can see the potential. Give me a couple of days to lab this cameo and I'll find some crazy combos for you guys. Next up, we have his teleport, which is very similar to Kung Lao's one. I think it's actually a little bit better, to be honest. It's very similar to Kung Lao's teleport where you can get some pretty crazy combos. Let me show you a few. Yo, that is so sick. From the triple fireball full screen. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Like I said, give me a few days. I'm going to find something crazy with this cameo. Mataro also has this projectile reflex. So from what I'm seeing with this character, he can't really be zoned. Like, I think he's going to be really good with zoners and against zoners. So it's going to take a bit of time to get used to him. The last move for Mataro is this little low shot right here. It's actually plus on block. So you get to keep your turn if they block this one. It also has some pretty decent range. It goes around half screen and you can kind of do it back to back. I think we should talk about the stomp first. It's an unblockable stomp. Classic Goro stomp right here. I haven't really actually tested this, but I can imagine there's some pretty cheap ways to set this up, just like that, for example. Next up, we have the Punch Walk, which is basically the exact same as the Frost one, to be honest. You kind of stole that from Goro. The main use for this right now, from what I can tell, is just to do it in block strings like this, to get a little bit of pushback and some extra chip damage. Somewhat similar to the Sonya cameo, Goro has his classic up punch that he had for a lot of games as well. If I spend meter on this combo, I'll honestly probably get 50%. Wow, 45%. Okay, probably not optimal, but it's pretty close. Goro also has this grab cameo move where he comes in and he grabs you from your legs. You can see right now, it's literally whiffing up close. So the only way this can actually hit your opponent is if they're crouching or blocking low. So you can pretty much use this as a low combo starter and it will give you a full combo. So use this in your strings, sneak it into your strings, get you some little cheeky mix-ups. If your character has a decent overhead or has some sneaky overheads in their strings, give Goro a try and see if you can make the mix-ups work. Final cameo of the video we're going to talk about is Darius. This is a pretty interesting one. So the first move is actually not complicated at all. It's just a spin. You can kind of do it on block. You can end combos with it. It actually goes pretty far as well. So it's not too bad to just kind of throw it out there. Similar to a lot of the other cameos, it is safe on block. So you can sneak it into your block strings for some chip damage. Not a bad move overall. Very easy to use. So the first move we'll look into is his tornado kick. I'm just going to show you it on block right now. 
You can see after he does it on block, he kind of just hangs around like this. And I'm going to show you why he does that. After he does this on block, you can actually grab him and make him do the front flip overhead. And then he hangs around behind. So what actually happens here is he does this move. You can do the overhead. Then he does another overhead. Then he runs away. If you want to, you can skip the tornado kicks and just go straight into the front flip overhead. So the reason Darius is so scary is because of this move right here. You can get some really scary mix-ups. Like that was low overhead, almost unblockable. And I got a full combo. I dropped the ender, but you get the point. Wow, <laughs> that was sick. That's just a little taste of what Darius can do. I'm sure over time he's going to be a really scary cameo. That is my full guiding breakdown of cameos in Mortal Kombat 1. I hope this video helps you decide which cameo you'll be using in your gameplay. I hope this video helps you choose the right cameo. If you want help choosing the right character, check out this video right here. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying Mortal Kombat 1. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. This game is crazy.